wrong place. Yes. Do you think that American capitalism, you know, to the extent that we're t telling the story of capitalism, c could it have existed without slavery? I mean, could it have been born without it? I mean, again, it's it's sort of like this dynamic with, with my daughter. She very well may go on to sort of... The story of his daughter is that he, get, he bought his daughter clothes and now she's selling the clothes that he bought her. So he's using that as a metaphor for slavery being the basis and, and and now he's saying the daughter is going to build an empire off of the clothes that he bought her and she might get some money and buy more clothes and, but the st seed capital the seed for entire business was the clothes that he gave her is that's a metaphor for slavery is at the beginning the capitalists didn't own anything it was the it was the slaves and and they just exploited the capital they produced there in order to create the system of capitalism so that's that's what the story is. He started out the video with the story about the daughter. So just filling you in. You know, sell the jeans that I got her for, you mm -hmm. know, enough money that she can then buy two other pieces of clothing and build her clothing empire. But yeah. if it wasn't for me buying those jeans in the first place, she would not be able to get this thing started. Could, could, could capitalism have worked without that level of of exploitation of basically free stuff to begin with i mean it's sort of like you know i don't know could donald trump have a dollar to his name right now if he didn't get that money from his dad uh or however you want to suggest no since i think if he just put it in index yeah, fund, he would but i don't want it more right but i, I mean, think yeah i think the answer to the last question is definitely no i think, well, okay. I, think the early, I think the earlier questions are a bit more complicated i mean you know in the abstract I mean, I gave him credit for at least saying that the question is a little bit more complicated. So he's not some ideologue who's out to get capitalism in the sense of to get the system and to link it to slavery. He's going to link it a little bit, but but he's not quite, I think, the Sam said, a usual guest is just going to plow ahead with this lead opening that Sam has given him. So he's he's going to be try to be a little nuanced here. Sure. You know, I think capital, when we're talking about capitalism, we have to talk about capitalism in the plural. So certainly we know that there can be capitalisms without slave labor. We, 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 we've had one Sam's since the Civil happy. War, you know, in this country. But, but that's, but, with, that, but, with that said, I mean, go ahead. But, I mean, everything that we had, you know, we got to the point where that slavery, and I don't know, and I guess this is a subsidiary question that I want to yeah. ask you. Could we have seen the industrial, the, the growth of industrial capitalism, that, yep. that really is the next era that you're talking about, without that slavery, even in the North? I mean, wasn't, I mean, wasn't it the, the, the ability of generating this labor-intensive commodity, ultimately cotton, um, that you could not have made as profitable and as, like, commodified i guess no uh, were it not for the fact that we just don't have to pay for the part that, to really make it on some level yeah i mean these are old important debates in economic history some have argued that profits from slavery you know directly led to investments in early industrialization you know those arguments those kind of direct connections right haven't held up as well haven't held up as well <laughs> so he's pushing back against sam they haven't had to hold up as well. Oh, my God, Sam. What are we going to do? Now, that's an understatement. They haven't held up, period. There is no direct connection. Cotton trade was a small fragment of the American, pop, the American uh, uh, economy, uh, the, the American economy. Now, it's, now they, one of these economists of this new school of economics, uh, did some math where he took, he took the total worth of cotton produced in a year, and then he took every intermediary step in the creation of that cotton, and he added it all up, uh, you know, the transportation and the manufacturing and every, and the shipping and every, every step along the way, from the picking all the way to the final good. And he added it all up, and he said, well, this was 50% of GDP in the United States. But of course, that's not how you measure GDP. He's comparing apples to oranges. The only part that's captured in GDP is the value of the final product. So uh, cotton was about 5%, not insignificant. A significant portion of the US economy was cotton. 
Um, when the country was founded in 1776, uh, cotton was insignificant, uh, very little export of cotton. It's only with the invention of the cotton gin, it's only in the 1790s that cotton starts to become a real important product. It's only in the, in the early 19th century that we start exporting huge amounts of cotton uh, to the United Kingdom. Um, and, and a lot of that, most of that, has to do not with slavery, but with what? It has to do with technology. It has to do with the fact that, um, let's see, it had to do with the fact that we were developing uh, better types of cotton, that we were, uh, you know, that the cotton gin had been invented, that there was actually innovation and in ingenuity happening that made cotton valuable. And indeed, slave, uh, you know, it's true that slaves produced cotton, but that doesn't mean that slaves were essential for the production of cotton. Or indeed, a productive, uh, the, 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 the best productive way to produce the cotton. It's fascinating that in 1870, so there was a decline after the Civil War, there was a decline in cotton production because of the disruption of the Civil War and everybody had gone to war, people had died. Uh, it, it took a while to get things ramped up. But by 1870, freed men, both blacks and whites, produced as much cotton in the South as the South had produced from slave labor in 1860. So it's not slavery that made cotton production. And indeed, you could argue, right, you know, uh, uh, you could argue that more cotton would have been produced if they hadn't used slave labor. Slave labor is known to be not very productive, quite expensive, uh, you know, uh, and, and not profitable from an economic perspective, profitable for the slave owner. But a an economy of the South based on slavery was actually an unproductive, inefficient economy. Uh, the, U the U.S., the South, would have been far richer, far richer, if it had never had slave labor. Not poorer. I mean, he's making an argument that they would have been poorer, right? That, uh, that they benefited from slavery, that slavery was some kind of zero cost or profit venture that they exploited and they did exploit. They exploited labor and they did. But all the value of that exploitation went to a few rich uh, slave owners. But economically, from an economic perspective, it was a drag on economic growth, not an accelerated economic growth. And even when it comes to cotton, as I said, by 1870, free men were producing just as much cotton as slaves were in 1860. You know, by, uh, in, um, in India, in Southwest China, in Egypt, cotton was produced by non-slaves. Cotton was not, in order to be profitable, did not necessitate slavery. You know, economists, these economists claim that, oh, but slaves are cheap labor. They're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're much cheaper. But it turns out um, that um, a Nobel Prize economist, Robert Fogel, in 1974, uh, wrote this paper that showed that productivity was incorporated into the market price of a slave. So you paid for that up front. It's how any capital market works. You, you pay for the expected pro productivity of what you're buying. If you bought a slave, you face the cost of alternative uses of capital. You could have used that capital to do something else, employ people, invest in technology, invest in, I don't know, other things other than cotton, potentially. 
There was no supernormal profits accrued from the purchase. Slave labor was not a free lunch, and wealth did not just pile up. On the contrary, So uh, the share of slaves in US wealth has been grossly exaggerated. It's far less than what it had been claimed before. Um, and it, the fact is that most of the increase in the production of cotton was not a consequence of more slaves, but was a consequence of increased productivity. Increased productivity that resulted from technology. So slavery was appalling. The victims of the slavery are the slaves. The, quote, benefactors of slavery are the slave owners. But the economy, the economy didn't get better because of slavery. It got worse because of slavery. Prosperity didn't depend on slavery. The United States and the United Kingdom and the rest of the world would have been just as rich, actually probably richer, without 250 years of, unrequited, of, of, of slavery. And they remain rich in spite of the fact that slavery is gone from the world. Right. All right. So let's see how, uh, how Jonathan Levy deals with some of this. But I, I still think a, a weaker version of the same argument which you're suggesting you know, has to has to be true, uh, in in the sense that, that, that without slavery, Sam's not happy. Uh, the commercial history of, of of the United States would have been greatly diminished. You know, greatly diminished. Really? How would it have been greatly diminished? Again, slaves are less productive than free labor, as history suggests, as economic theory suggests, as if you understand anything about human psychology and human motivation suggests. Would that have meant that capitalism never would have come about? I, I don't know if I go, you know, that far. It's an interesting counterfactual question, but we can definitely look at what did happen and, and say that, that, that uh, you know, slavery was very important to early American economic development. I think that changes over time. I think it's much more important earlier in this period. I think by the time you're in the 1840s and 1850s, um, you're seeing an industrial capitalism develop in the North, which starts to look different. Now, and then I'll just say one more. It's very different. And indeed, that industrial capitalism in the North is where the real wealth was being produced. It's where immigrants were coming in. Immigrants didn't go to the South. They went North. It's where jobs were being created. It's where real sustainable wealth was being produced. It's why during the Civil War, the North was so much richer than the South. It was because of this manufacturing capitalism. It was because of non slave-dependent capitalism, free capitalism, that the North flourished as much as it did, whereas the South stagnated. So it's just not true that the commercial history of the United States depends on slavery in any way, shape, or form. One more thing, you know, slavery is, 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 is the most uh, awful form of coerced labor, but coerced labor. Absolutely. So even when capitalism doesn't depend on slavery as such, um, it still oftentimes, uh, you know, depends upon or draws from, you know, coercion of labor. And, and that's something we have to be mindful of. But coercion of labor is never capitalism. Capitalism is the exact opposite. Capitalism is voluntary labor. It's not coerced labor. And, 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 and they, they're trying to make, and they do, the left does this all the time, try to make this implication that, that voluntary labor is equivalent to coerced labor. And that's just absolute travesty and absolute evil to make that comparison. All right, uh, let's keep going. You know, cross periods. Be before we get into this next uh, period, let me just ask you one more question too. How the Louisiana Purchase, and in particular the Haitian Revolution, um, plays into this. I mean, as, as a factor in changing the course of capitalism as we head towards uh, this next era. Yeah, I mean, so there's a, a very specific point, which is that without the revolution in Haiti, uh, very likely Napoleon doesn't decide to sell Louisiana to the United States. 
Um, and so that's that's a very significant. Second, uh, you know, I argue in the book that that despite the American Revolution, it's very important, but it's it's not a much of a discontinuity in the book. You know, it's in the middle of of the same age as I as I have it, and that actually what the Louisiana Purchase does for the United States is it it, it means that the United States kind of looks like the 18th century British Empire, uh, instead of having slave uh, colonies in the Caribbean with an industrial metropole in the north and then provisioning from the Northeast uh, uh, colonial America at the time. Instead, we have this very thriving plantation complex rooted in cotton that emerges out of Louisiana that's connected commercially to the rise of Chicago, cities like that in the Midwest that focused on grain, that focused on food, that focused on provisions, and that industrialization in, in the Northeast. I mean, this idea that Chicago rose because of slavery, that Chicago, that, 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 that the whole provision of food and grain is all about slavery. You know, weren't there people in the North? Weren't there people in the West? Weren't there people in the South who were not slaves? Did they not need food? If there was no slavery, would there be no grain industry? Would there be no food production? Would there be no agriculture? Would there be none of this? I mean, it is such a, it's such a bogus argument that these people make. They, they take, um, uh, they take history and they can't think beyond the direct relationships that they see, right? Slaves, food, food goes to slave. Oh, you see, they made money off of the food that went to the slaves. So there's another industry making money off of slavery. But if the slaves were free men, they'd still be eating. The industry that produces food is not dependent on slavery, it's dependent on people, but not on slavery qua slavery. The only people who got rich off of slaves are the slave owners and the slave traders, the people who brought them over from Africa and traded them. But it's, um, they look for anything, anything to undermine capitalism, anything to undercut it, anything to portray it in the worst, most ugly, darkest light. Their motivation is not history. Their motivation is not to understand economics. Now, again, Levy, I think, is a little bit more honest than most of them. But the motivation of most of these 1619 authors is they start with the premise, capitalism is evil. Capitalism is, was founded, was established on the backs of slaves. Now let's go and figure out how we can manipulate the numbers and manipulate the history and find links and connections and do everything we can to abandon economic theory, to abandon economics generally, just in order to show that this is all true, that this must have happened. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.